Lu Shi returned to England in 1900 and unintentionally swept the literary world, leaving behind that proverb, Britain has always been unethical in terms of human behavior. Every time the British people in later generations think of it, they are deeply moved and marvel at what kind of international spirit can make a Chinese person so heartbroken about Britain and leave such a prophecy keywords of the novel. British Literary Giants Without Pop-Ups, download the complete collection of British Literary Giants TXT, and read the latest chapters of British Literary Giants. Chapter 1. 1900, London. You are listening at novelfull.audio. Chapter 1 1900, London Dong. Lu Shi was hit by a collision. He opened his eyes and found a little boy standing in front of him. His brown hair was haphazardly combed to one side, and his right arm was spread out, supported by a bent arm, carrying a thick stack of newspapers. Um newspaper boy. There is clearly no such profession in modern China, let alone a young foreigner. Lu Shi couldn't help but mutter to himself, I have thoughts every day and dreams every night. I have such strange dreams. It seems that I can't continue like this 996, otherwise there is a risk of sudden death even if I doze off on the subway. The reason for saying this is because he has been translating an English work recently and has reached the point of staying up all night. The workload of translation is generally not too large, and one can freely arrange work hours without the need for overtime, but the time of the land was different. Due to being proficient in multiple languages and studying related majors in university, coupled with a large amount of reading and high literary literacy, the workload was heavy and urgent, and there was no opportunity to rest well. Even the scattered time of taking the subway should be made use of as much as possible. He decided to close his eyes and continue sleeping, squinting for a while. Unexpectedly, the phantom newsboy in front of him spoke up, Sir, do you want a newspaper? I am still using English. Without much thought, Lu Shi waved his hand and casually replied in English, No need, no need, let me continue. Before the words finished, I couldn't help but freeze. He blinked fiercely and stared blankly at the newsboy in front of him. The newsboy thought business was coming and continued to promote, Mr. Churchill delivered another speech on the narrowly escaped incident and criticized the government's policies during the Anglo-British War, firmly opposing the expansion plan. The content is exciting and cannot be missed. Churchill, the Anglo-British War, opposed the military expansion plan, as long as you are a normal person, you should realize the seriousness of the problem. Lu Shi's gaze swept over the newspaper and found that the text on it was heavily pasted, with English letters hooked together like tadpoles, not the level that modern printing should have. He swallowed saliva and glanced roughly at the newspaper content, only to find that the report on Churchill occupied almost three dot quarters of the front page, with the words, October 13, 1900, prominently printed on the front of the newspaper. In an instant, Lu Shi lost all sleep. He looked up and looked around, in front of me is not the clean and bright carriages of Metro Line 5, but the dimly lit alleys, with rows of ancient British-style buildings towering, each brick and tile appearing exceptionally realistic, the ground is very muddy, with occasional carriages passing by, their hooves clattering and splashing muddy water on the ground, there is still a faint odor in the air, emanating from the Thames River, which is also one of the hallmarks of London's rapid. Industrialization in the early 20th century. Both historical events and the surrounding environment can match the year 1900, it's really a journey, it's not running anymore. As soon as he arrived, he settled in. Lu Shi decided to first figure out who he really was, so he reached out and touched the back of his head. He found that there was indeed a snake braid there, and roughly guessed his identity, government-funded international students sent by the Qin government to London. He bowed his head and pondered for a moment. Pointing to the newspaper, he asked the newsboy, Is this the Manchester Guardian? The newsboy breathed a sigh of relief, grateful that he had guessed correctly. As expected, international students are all literate. He stuffed the newspaper into Lu Shi's hand and then spread out his palm, Lu Shi. Tisk. It seems that this money has to be given even if it's not given. He touched his whole body up and down, 
and finally found a protrusion in the lining of his coat, which seemed to be a patch sewn on, but the upper side was not sealed, leaving a small hole that could reach into two fingers. The newsboy observed curiously and couldn't help but ask, this. Isn't your clothes, is it? Lu Shi coughed awkwardly and took out a penny, but instead of giving it directly to the other person, he asked, Hey, is there any place nearby to rent a house? Clothing, food, housing, and transportation are all things that need to be solved. The newsboy cleverly snatched the coin away, behind you, bar. Leave this sentence and run away briskly. Lu Shi muttered, Little monkey. But he still turned his head obediently and found that the stone steps he was sitting on belonged to the front door of a bar, and from time to time, rough and wild laughter could be heard from inside. He stood up and read the sign of the bar. Rudder A large ship rudder was prominently nailed to the sign. At this point, the door was opened. A tall bearded sailor pushed out the door, his face bright red, and the bulging muscles on his chest rose and fell with his breath. He immediately noticed Lu Shi with a sarcastic smile and said, What's wrong, you vomited it all. Do you still want to fight? I'm warning you, I can still pack a whale in my stomach. Sailors love to brag, and this guy is likely to come out and vomit. Lu Shi was too lazy to expose it and looked towards his feet, only to realize that there was indeed a puddle of vomit there. The cause of death of the original owner of this body has been found. It can only be said that fake alcohol harms people. Lu Shi shook his head and replied to the other person, I just arrived in London. I don't know where I can rent a house. The sailor was taken aback for a moment before saying, No wonder you're a stranger. TSK TSK how could there be such a foolish person who came out to drink without even renting a house? He shouted towards the bar door, Little Stanford, there's a tenant here. Here we go. Little Stanford took a few steps to grab the door and looked at Lu Shi, that gaze was clearly weighing. Lu Shi cleared his throat and said, I want to rent a house. Little Stanford probably felt that he couldn't eat much meat on this order, and suddenly lost the impatient enthusiasm he had just had. He asked reluctantly, Okay, you can rent for long or short periods, and you can choose a suite or a single room. What do you want to do? Lu Shi Gang just touched it and there wasn't much money in the patch, so he replied, the cheapest one will do. Before the words could be finished, a surprised voice suddenly sounded from behind. Lu, you want to change places. Didn't we just agree? Lu Shi couldn't help but turn back, unexpectedly, there was an East Asian man with a short stature and a slightly comical mustache. He looked like he hadn't woken up, with messy hair and very thick black circles under his eyes. It was like deliberately applying smoky makeup, making his already small eyes appear even smaller, however, this appearance added a touch of scholarly atmosphere to him. Lu Shi always felt that the person in front of him was somewhat familiar, as if he had seen it in an old black and white photo. He fell into memories, this person is is this person suddenly, he lifted his head and stared closely at the short man, Summer. Natsum Soseki. Hearing the name, the other party's beard shook obviously, and pulled Lu Shi to the other side of the alley. At the same time, he rose with a very bad, British accent. Fuck, how many times have I told you? Don't call me a pseudonym. Surprisingly, it's Natsum Soseki. Lu Shi didn't expect to meet historical figures on the first day of wearing more and more clothes, and, to hear that, the two seem to be roommates. End of this chapter. Chapter 2. Research on Blood Characters. You are listening at novelfull.audio. Chapter 2 Research on Blood Characters Lu Shi followed Natsum Soseki to the house he rented on Brea Road. This house has a bedroom and is equipped with a living room. The furnishings are quite old. On the east wall of the living room, Two windows sealed with bricks are exceptionally eye-dot catching and tightly blocked, resulting in extremely poor air circulation inside the house. Natsum Soseki Roast Don't hate it, there are many such things in London. Lu Shi nodded, well, the aftermath of the window tax. 
Natsum Soseki looked at him in surprise and asked curiously, what is a window tax? Lu Xu didn't rush to answer the other party, but walked to the window and fumbled on the wedge-dot-shaped brick for a while. Finally, he found the buckle and pulled hard, click, there is a small hole in the lower right corner of the stone brick window. Natsum Soseki looked bewildered and said, what? What are you doing? We. Hiss. Broke the landlord's window. Lu Xu waved his hand to signal the other party not to panic and explained, didn't we just mention the window tax? Before 1851, British laws stipulated that a house with less than 10 windows would be taxed by 2 shillings, a house with 10 to 20 windows would be taxed by 6 shillings, and a house with more than 20 windows would be taxed by 10 shillings. Therefore, this tax is only levied on the number of windows, without considering the area and value of the house, as well as the taxpayer's tax-paying ability, and the burden is extremely unreasonable. In order to evade tax, many taxpayers have turned open windows into dark windows, just like this. He lay on the small hole and observed from side to side, saying, at most, this thing can be changed for ventilation. You don't have to think about it lighting up. How let me wake up first. Shemu Shushi breathed a sigh of relief, just now, he was almost scared to death. Unexpectedly, Lu Xu said again, it's not a solution to stay like this. One day, I'll smash my head off the window. Natsum Soseki felt depressed and thought to herself, why did she invite an ancestor to come back and share a house? After hesitating for a moment, he couldn't help but ask, Lu, why do you share a house with someone? When land is silent, why else can it be? There's no money, Natsum Soseki was a bit surprised and asked, do you Chinese international students also have no money? I took a boat all the way to London and stayed in Shanghai, Fuzhou, and other places. The ports were bustling, and all the buildings looked magnificent, which my hometown couldn't compare to. I remember when I was in Shanghai, I went to the customs to visit Tachibana Masamyun, and even got lost once because of those western buildings. Lu Xu smacked his tongue, you also said it's western architecture, the concession area. Natsum Soseki fell silent. Before the signing of the Treaty of Commerce and Navigation between Japan and Britain, foreigners had the right to freely reside in certain treaty ports in Japan and enjoyed extraterritorial jurisdiction, in terms of external incompetence and humiliation of the country, the Tokugawa shogunate is similar to the Qing court. The atmosphere is somewhat eerie. Lu Xu moved several boxes and travel bags to his bedside, opened his luggage, and arranged the furnishings. Natsum Soseki turned on the light, read and write. After a moment of silence, Lu Xu walked over to the other person and glanced at the desk, only to find that it was filled with various literary books, and even several pre-1893 seaside magazines, actually the Strand magazines. A detective picture with a pipe in its mouth was vividly displayed on the cover. Sherlock Holmes. Lu Xu picked up one of the books and flipped through it casually. Natsum Soseki was still writing something, without looking up, and said, Do you like this? Then take it and read it, and return it to me after reading. This kind of novel is useless for my studies. He chose the Chinese language program at the University of London as his major, studying under the renowned scholar William Alexander Smith, while also delving into literature, philosophy, and sociology. Lu Xu asked, You are from a public school. What are the requirements for your studies from the higher authorities? Natsum Soseki gave a bitter smile and replied, studying English. However, I only came a few days ago and realized that there is a huge difference between so dot called British literature and the English I used to know. Mastering English is not enough to enhance national strength. As he spoke, he pointed to what he was writing and continued, but no matter what, the homework assigned by the teacher still needs to be completed. Lu Xu leaned over and asked, what homework? Natsum Soseki replied, I have just arrived, and my teacher is going to test my understanding and grasp of British literature to what extent. Since it is British literature, then popular reading materials like Seaside Magazine naturally don't matter. This happened to be within the professional range of land time, 
he said, maybe not. Just like. As he spoke, he searched through the stacks of books and finally found Holmes's first case. He asked, how would you translate this title? Natsum Soseki sighed helplessly, you don't understand Japanese, even if I talk to you, it's useless. Lu Shur urged, just say it. Natsum Soseki rubbed a corner of his mustache and pondered as he replied, a study in scarlet, should be a study of blood characters or a study of crimson. What's so difficult about this? It's just the literal meaning. Lu Shur shook his head, wrong. This is the first time Natsum Soseki has been criticized professionally, and she is somewhat dissatisfied, saying, so what do you mean? Lu Shur chuckled and said in Japanese, it should be, scarlet composition. Dot. Upon hearing this translation, Natsum Soseki immediately felt that Lu Shur's level was insufficient and he lost interest, he lazily said, the three difficulties of translating are faithfulness, expressiveness, and elegance. It is already a great difficulty to seek its faithfulness. If you care about faithfulness, but if you do not reach it, even if you translate it, you still do not translate it. How can you achieve greatness? Mr. Yen Fu of your country proposed faithfulness, expressiveness, and elegance, but you are so good that you disregard them for the sake of expression. As he spoke, he finally discovered something and widened his eyes, you know Japanese. Lu Shu didn't take the conversation back and pointed to the magazine, saying, what do you think the original text of this paragraph says? How about we call it, a study in scarlet? Using a little artistic terminology doesn't hurt me. It's clear that, a study in scarlet, uses artistic terminology, and in the field of art, what does study mean? Natsum Soseki's thoughts were once again pulled back, for a long time, he gave the answer. When painting, it refers to composition, trial, and trial, in music, it is an etude. Lu Shu nodded, moreover, the Sherlock Holmes series is created from the first perspective of Dr. Watson, and the author Conan Doyle happens to be a doctor. Considering that this is the first article in the series, it would be most appropriate to include the author in the composition. Even if evidence is only found in the original text, it is already convincing enough. Natsum Soseki showed a pleasing and sincere expression, Lu Jun, what the hell are you? Lu Shu interrupted, let's try to use English as much as possible. Natsum Soseki coughed, stood up, took a step forward, legs touching the ground, hips resting on ankles, upper body straight, hands neatly placed on knees, afterwards, dong, he suddenly bent down, sensational mud private horse racing. Lu Shu he didn't want Natsum Soseki to really hit him, so he quickly dodged the other person's face and said, Don't. Big brother, don't mess with me. Natsum Soseki seemed to feel that there was enough time to apologize and stood up, Lu, I was wrong. I underestimated you in my heart just now. His gaze turned again to the seaside magazine, and he continued, I have also underestimated the hidden literary and artistic qualities in popular literature. As compensation, I have decided to make the study of the Sherlock Holmes series my homework and thoroughly understand and read it. Lu Sure has one head and two big ones, you don't have to do this either. Holmes still has many unscientific aspects. Natsum Soseki was surprised and curious, saying, didn't you say that Dr. Ayer's writing style is very professional? After reading it, I feel that the plot has a strong resonance and the reasoning is also very rigorous. Lu Shu shook his head, there are really many unscientific aspects. For example, in The Spotted Strap Case, snakes can suffocate and die in an airtight safe, in The Yellow-Faced Man, black and white people give birth to a child with a darker skin color than their black father, which is also outrageous, in The Silver Horse, there are many descriptions that do not comply with formal horse racing rules. Natsum Soseki swallowed saliva and picked up a pen to silently record, he is very certain that the homework will be handed in tomorrow. End of this chapter Chapter 3 Arthur Conan Doyle You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 3 Arthur Conan Doyle There was nothing to say overnight. 
The next day, Lu Xiu woke up relatively late because he had drunk yesterday and still had a slight hangover. He lay on the faucet to rinse his mouth, washed his face, and then found himself alone in the room, on the bed beside Natsum Soseki, the blanket was curled up in a ball, and the person had already left, probably going to the University of London. Because there are no windows, the room is pitch black, and I don't know the exact time. Lu Xiu lit the gas lamp and began to carefully search for luggage, with the aim of finding identification information. Quickly, he found some letters that could deduce his identity as an international student, but he came from a poor background and his parents were both deceased, and he was raised by his uncles. If placed in modern times, the opportunity to study abroad at public expense will definitely be overwhelming, but at that time, the Qing dynasty still insisted that overseas was a barbarian land, and foreigners were uncivilized barbarians who ate human flesh and drank human blood, which led to most affluent families unwilling to let their children stay abroad, and those who are relatively open-minded, have no prejudice against foreigners, and will only choose the United States for studying abroad, which makes the opportunity to go to the UK cheaper. Even from a poor family like him, he is very puzzled about studying abroad. His uncles have been very aggressive in their correspondence, even cutting off their living expenses. He murmured to himself, TSK, no wonder there's no money. Because the family did not support it, only the three melons and two dates provided by the Qing court were available. What's even more outrageous is that they didn't even arrange for a school, so they packed their luggage and left it on the ship, this is simply sending people over to play the beggar simulator. Lu Xiu stretched lazily, collected his letters, and turned off the lights, ah, we need to find a way to make money. Whispering, he left his residence. The sunshine is good. On both sides of Brea Road, there were many drunken men gathered, half lying and enjoying sunbathing. They occasionally patted the walls with their hands, murmured a few times, and then changed to a more comfortable position. Their clothes were dirty from the mud splashed by the carriage, and it didn't matter. Lu Xiu bypassed these people and walked towards the direction of the main street. A few steps later, someone stopped him from behind and said, Lu, wait for me. Lu Xiu turned around and found Natsum Soseki walking towards him, followed by two white people with typical British beards, one of them is about sixty years old, leaning on a cane and looking a bit old-fashioned, the other person who just saw a recent photo in Seaside magazine last night was Arthur Conan Doyle. Natsum Soseki quickly approached and excitedly recommended, this is Mr. Smith, my teacher. He has read my article and greatly appreciates your profound insights into British literature. This is Dr. Doyle, the creator of the Sherlock Holmes series. He is Mr. Smith's friend and also very interested in you. Two British people shook hands with Lu Xiu in a friendly manner. Doyle invited, Mr. Lu, I see a coffee shop nearby and would like to invite you to take a break. Being able to sit at the same table as a legendary writer, Lu Xiu naturally had no reason to refuse. Four people arrived at the coffee shop and sat by the glass window, basking in the sunlight. The antique atmosphere in the store, combined with the lively sunshine and the exquisite combination of logs, made Lu Xiu feel peaceful and had an inexplicable warmth towards the year 1900. Smith dusted his cane, beckoned the clerk to serve four cups of coffee, and then joked, at this time, you should order a cup of strong coffee, and then watch the traffic outside in a daze, enjoying the entire afternoon. Doyle smiled, I thought you could read a book, but I didn't expect you to be in a daze. Smith shook his head, do you read your novel? It's boring. Lu Xiu vaguely felt that the two were singing the double read, so he shook his head at Natsum Soseki, who was not familiar with him, and then watched the two British continue to perform. Sure enough, Doyle began to get to the point. Noble Mr. Smith, you find detective novels boring because your aesthetics are not good. You see, these two overseas students really like my works, right? His face turned slightly towards Lu Xiu. Two people look at each other. Lu Xiu replied, Dr. Doyle is popular in England and loved by everyone. It was not said that, Sherlock Holmes was popular in England, but that, Dr. Doyle was popular in England, 
which greatly benefited Doyle. He strongly disliked the situation where people only knew about Sherlock Holmes without knowing about Dr. Earl, and even wrote in a letter to his mother, I'm considering killing Sherlock Holmes. Get rid of him. He takes up too much of my time. So, Lu Xiu's praise was very appropriate, the atmosphere suddenly rose. Doyle happily played with his beard and said, Mr. Lu's level is very high. You should know that only a very few people can understand the title of Scarlet Works as thoroughly as you do. In my impression, it seems that only Mr. Wilde can. Natsum Soseki was surprised, is that Mr. Wilde? Oscar Wilde. Doyle nodded, that's right. Mr. Stoddard, the editor of Lippincott Monthly, invited me and Oscar to a dinner and invited us to contribute. That dinner ultimately gave birth to two works, one of which was my, Four Signatures, and the other was Oscar's, The Picture of Dorian Gray. Dot. His face was filled with pride. Natsum Soseki is a bit confused and doesn't understand what this has to do with the previous topic. Smith, who was standing beside him, shook his head and explained, during that meeting, Oscar praised Scarlet Works as a very artistic title that coincided with Mr. Liu. Being snatched from the conversation, Doyle felt slightly displeased and drank coffee to cover it up. Smith roast, well, you've said that 170.5 times. I can memorize all the recipes for dinner. After speaking, he turned to Lu Xiu, to be honest, Mr. Oscar would definitely love to meet you if he weren't in Paris. Lu Xiu didn't make a sound, he knew that Oscar Wilde passed away in Paris in November 1900 due to meningitis, and there wasn't much time left. Doyle coughed lightly and inserted the topic, however, Mr. Lu seems to have a lot of confusion about my work. His gaze suddenly sharpened, like two sharp swords, tightly piercing into Lu Xiu's body. Natsum Soseki twisted anxiously, this matter arose from him, no wonder he was embarrassed. Lu Xiu replied indifferently, it's not the fault of Dr. Doyle. This statement is quite exaggerated, implying that there are indeed issues with the Sherlock Holmes series. Doyle frowned, can you explain it in detail? Lu Xiu continued, taking the case of the spotted bands as an example, the perpetrator used a venomous snake as a weapon to commit the crime, but in reality it was very unreasonable. Firstly, venomous snakes suffocate and die in safes. Secondly, venomous snakes are reptiles and cannot feed on milk. Thirdly, using a whistle to summon snakes is also unreasonable. Snakes have no external ears and cannot hear the sound of a whistle. Doyle's face was as black as ink, it should be noted that Spotted Ribbon is the most bizarre and dramatic short story in the entire series, and naturally one of the most popular short stories, I didn't expect this foreigner in front of me to easily point out three loopholes. Doyle couldn't help but argue, how do you know that snakes don't drink milk? Lu Xiu felt that this question was a bit silly, he said, the reason why human offspring can breastfeed is because the mother secretes milk, so only mammals can breastfeed. This is the simplest truth. Doyle's face turned even darker. Natsum Soseki gulped down his saliva and rounded up the conversation, saying, Dr. Doyle's writing style is scientific and professional. Here, science doesn't mean. Well, science means. Oh, by the way, deductive method. Dr. Doyle is good at using rigorous causal reasoning to unfold stories. After saying this, Doyle's face didn't look good. He said, but Mr. Shemu, why is it that your article says Holmes' reasoning is very subjective? Natsum Soseki's face turned bitter. Lu Xiu looked over and cast a questioning gaze, saying in his mouth, this is not what I said. Natsum Soseki lowered his voice and said, I said it. Lu Xiu was bewildered, what? What did you say? Natsum Soseki nodded and answered, in the riddle of Leggett, Holmes himself said, the most important aspect of detective art is being able to see from numerous facts which are the key questions and which are the secondary questions. However, it is clear that Holmes hardly ever presents all the clues for readers to distinguish which are the key questions. This cannot be blamed on the author, 
mainly because detective literature is not yet mature and does not even have the concept of authenticity, and some minor issues in the creation are normal. But Doyle doesn't care about these, when he looked at Lou, he clenched his two fists tightly, and the veins on his forehead jumped straight, this pot is obviously going to be carried by Lou Sher. Scholars are at odds with each other, there is no difference between ancient and modern times, China and foreign countries. End of this chapter. Chapter 4. Gentlemen. You are listening at NovelFull.audio. Chapter 4 Gentlemen The atmosphere has dropped to freezing point. Suddenly, Doyle smiled, so it seems that you too are still literary critics. Mr. Liu, have you ever considered submitting articles to newspapers and magazines? A strange aura of yin and yang comes from landing. Liu Shizheng was worried about having nowhere to make money. Although he knew the other party might dig a pit, he had real skills at his disposal and fearlessly said, my writing skills are still good. Upon hearing these words, Natsum Soseki opened his mouth, but ultimately held back and remained silent. Smith's face became serious, and he said to Doyle with a hint of warning, what, do you want Mr. Liu to submit to the Seaside magazine? With your recommendation as a renowned writer, there must be no problem, but... The old professor's love for punches and punches is beyond words, he was worried that Lu Xiu's level was not enough, and he was afraid that this young man would be ruined in his lifetime, of course, I am also afraid that Doyle's reputation will be affected. Doyle waved his hand, I think we should contact Charles. Smith suddenly realized, Charles Presswich Scott is the editor of the Manchester Guardian, and the Manchester Guardian has a book review page, which is just suitable for people who are good at literary criticism. Unfortunately, Smith was a humble gentleman and a true English gentleman, skilled in certain things but not in seeking personal gain, without considering the risks of the Continental era. You should know that Sherlock Holmes was very popular. In the December 1893 publication of The Last Case, Doyle had Sherlock Holmes and his archenemy Professor Moriarty buried at the Leicester Falls. Later, many people wore black armbands to commemorate this detective, and even cursed him as a beast. Such novel characters can also be evaluated by Lu Xur. Doyle is getting wet here. Lu Xur pondered and said, I want to write and see for myself. The other three of them looked bewildered. Smith first reacted and asked, What is it about? A novel. Lu Xur nodded, A detective novel. Doyle's eyes couldn't help but squint and he said, young people nowadays really have some courage. That's good. I'll introduce you to Charles and let your book pass through his eyes. How about tomorrow? Natsum Soseki was shocked, tomorrow. Doyle didn't even look at him, but continued to face the land, Mr. Lu hasn't started writing yet, has he? Lu Xu replied, of course, there are already saved manuscripts. Thank you for Dr. Doyle's recommendation. Doyle's gaze became even colder before nodding to Smith. They stood up and left the table, Doyle turned around and left, while Smith smiled at the two young men from the east before leaning on his cane to pursue his friend. Watching their backs disappear at the door, Natsum Soseki breathed a sigh of relief and looked at Lu Xu, asking, You. Have you really written and saved the manuscript? This is English writing and proofreading alone will take a lot of time, right? Lu Xu shook his head and replied, of course I didn't write it. Natsum Soseki's eyes were stunned, ah. It wasn't written. Lu Xu waved his hand and comforted, why are you shouting so loudly? Don't worry, go back and write casually. There shouldn't be any problem with getting two to three thousand words. Can you write twenty thousand to thirty thousand words in a day, as if you were a printing machine. Natsum Soseki tried hard not to roll her eyes and chose to change the topic. How do I feel that you and Dr. Doyle are somewhat? It seems. Maybe. 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 Are you not very compatible? Lu Xu felt a bit amused upon hearing this, thinking to himself that this old man was truly a hindsight, he nodded and said, don't hesitate. 
I just don't deal with him very well, otherwise he wouldn't introduce me to the editor of the Manchester Guardian. Natsum Soseki's face was puzzled, unsure of any connection between them. Lu Shur explained. I brought back a copy of the Manchester Guardian yesterday. Have you read it? What's the headline on the front page? Natsum Soseki has a reading habit, and even if he is not interested in writing, he will roughly glance at it, as he recalled, he said, it seems like he was talking about a politician named Churchill who criticized the government's policies during the Anglo-British War and firmly opposed the military expansion plan. Is there any problem? Lu Shur smiled, since you have come to London, you should know more or less about politics. Although Churchill is a conservative party, his views are incompatible with the conservative party, which is why he made the front page headlines of the Manchester Guardian. Natsum Soseki felt like her brain couldn't turn, her eyes filled with confusion. Lu Shur sighed. Don't you understand? The Manchester Guardian has a political bias towards the Liberal Party, and Doyle. Hum. The following words are self-evident. Natsum Soseki pondered, I see what you mean. Dr. Doyle's tendency is conservative, so he probably has a bad relationship with the Manchester Guardian. But he is too famous, and the editor of the Manchester Guardian can't refuse him directly, so I still want to meet you. Finally, I won't give you a copy, so I have the right to hand it over. As he spoke, he couldn't help but show a look of disgust and ask strangely, how do you know Dr. Doyle's political tendencies? This is a bit difficult to explain. Due to the global condemnation of Britain's Boer War in South Africa, Doyle wrote a booklet titled, War in South Africa. Origins and Acts to Defend Britain, this book has been translated into multiple languages and has had a significant impact. This incident certainly reflects Doyle's conservative tendencies, but it did not happen in 1900 and Lu Shur cannot explain it clearly. He changed the topic and said, on the surface, Doyle was promoting his younger generation, who was still an international student from the East, but in reality, he didn't do anything. Perhaps this is a gentleman's refusal. Natsum Soseki sneered, no, he didn't do nothing. At least he got sick of the Manchester Guardian. Lu Shur was stunned for a while before suddenly burst into laughter, he slammed the other person's shoulder, I didn't expect you to have occasional humor. Natsum Soseki said, what did you say earlier? Oh, by the way, gentleman's refusal, gentlemen. I think it's just farting. The last sentence is in Japanese, his tone was fierce, as if he wanted to vent all the accumulated resentment in his chest. He is very short in stature, walking on the streets of London surrounded by tall and straight white people. It is inevitable that he will feel ashamed and full of inferiority. Coupled with the lack of money in his pocket, he is living a tight life, and this emotion accumulates even more. Moreover, the more insecure one is, the easier it is to be discriminated against, no wonder he said in the preface of, On Literature. The two years living in London were particularly unpleasant. Among the English gentlemen, I lived a miserable life like a curly poodle with a pack of wolves. Lu Shur said, I see that your teacher is very nice and a true gentleman. Natsum Soseki regained his composure and said, Unfortunately, Mr. Smith is one of the few people in London. The vast majority are superficial gentlemen, but in reality, they are mere beasts in disguise. He shook his head to shake off his negative emotions and asked, So, do you still need to go back and write those two to three thousand words? Lu Shur said, Right. Why not write? Natsum Soseki said in amazement, You still want to write when you know it's impossible to pass the draft. And I read that the Manchester Guardian should have no novel publication space, and the editor can refuse you with a straight face. Lu Shur chuckled, opportunities are right in front of us, where is the reason not to try? Looking at his confident appearance, Natsum Soseki suddenly felt that Doyle's gentlemanly behavior might cause him big trouble. The new book is on its way and requires everyone's support and encouragement. Whether it's book reviews, chapter reviews, recommendation tickets, monthly tickets, or tips, everyone should greet this book more often. End of this chapter. Chapter 5 
No one survives. You are listening at NovelFull.audio. Chapter 5, No One Survives, Returning to Boulevard Road, the two of them noticed the note posted on the door. Lou Sher pulled it down and glanced, the landlord posted it, including gas and water bills, TSK. Even dealing with feces and urine costs money, there are really a lot of miscellaneous expenses. He folded the note and put it away. Natsum Soseki rubbed his forehead and said, I don't know if London in the book is really London. For example, in Sherlock Holmes, the landlord's wife takes care of the living of two tenants. How did she get to our place? He was disheartened. Lu Sher explained, the landlord probably didn't discriminate against us. In the novel, Holmes spends all day at home fooling around, doing chemistry experiments and live fire shooting, and playing the violin in the middle of the night. How much rent do you think he would pay? Implicitly, Holmes not only rented a house, but also paid a considerable amount of service fees. He continued, and don't forget Holmes' identity. He is the savior of the Scottish court and a guest of many European royal families. Such a tenant would be loved by anyone. Natsum Soseki nodded and shook her head, that's not right, Sherlock Holmes is so powerful. Why did he want to share a house in the first place? Is this reasonable? They chatted and entered the living room. Lu Shishao, you see, novels are such fragile things that are prone to loopholes and cannot withstand scrutiny. So, don't ask, asking is what the plot needs. Besides, Doyle has already forcefully explained that Sherlock Holmes was originally indifferent to money, and his success came later, so sharing a lease is not really too far-fetched. This explanation is indeed forceful, and Natsum Soseki is too lazy to take over, having experienced today's meeting with Doyle, he has already realized that the novel author dares to boast about anything for the sake of the plot. However, through the conversation just now, he became more and more convinced that his roommate, Lu Sher, could write good words. After all, he was so familiar with the customs and traditions of London, as if he had lived here for a long time, like a person born to know. Turn on the gas lamp at midnight and write three names in Chinese on the paper. Release the capital and clear up the situation, Arthur Conan Doyle, Agatha Christie. These three are the three great masters of detective literature, this statement comes from A Brief History of World Detective Novels, and was invented by the author Chao Wenwen himself, so it is a unique concept in China. Staring at their names, Lu Xiu fell into contemplation. Natsum Soseki was very curious, but when it came to unpublished works by Lu Xiu, he naturally avoided suspicion and avoided them. After a while, he couldn't help but ask, what have you decided to write? Lu Xiu said, well, I'm still considering it. I had some disagreements with Doyle today. If he wants to write a detective novel of the same type as Doyle's representative work, it's best to put an effort and benchmark it against Sherlock Holmes, that's exactly why he listed those three names. There's actually no need to hesitate, there's almost no second choice, Lu Sher drew a circle around Agatha Christie's name, with a slightly sinister smile on the corner of his mouth. He murmured to himself, I admit that your excellency is very strong, but when I take out Shapa, how will your excellency handle it? Natsum Soseki didn't understand, but when watching Lu, he was focused and not easily disturbed. Lu Shu pondered deeply, Shapo is a master of literary works, including masterpieces such as Murder on the Orient Express, Roger's Mystery, ABC Murder, The Nile Massacre, No One Survives, any one of these books is enough to benefit the entire creative career of future mystery fiction writers, for example, The Nile Massacre, has an almost perfect alibi, and its core plot was copied at least five times in the first 300 episodes of Detective Conan. Which one exactly should I use? Lu Xu frowned. Natsum Soseki, standing beside him, saw that he had not started writing yet and asked in a low voice, haven't you figured it out yet? Lu Xu said, literary thoughts are like a spring, there are too many themes, this cow boasts outrageously. Natsum Soseki, who didn't hear it, continued, then you can choose the one with the widest audience. Didn't we just discuss it? Novels can't withstand scrutiny. 
since that's the case, why not choose a novel theme to write about? That's right. Lu Xiu no longer thought much and wrote the title, No One Survives. In his mind, this book is not just a detective novel, but more like a crime mystery novel, but precisely because of this, the sales of this book are very high, with over 100 million copies sold worldwide. Because novels centered solely on logic and trickery are neither easy to write nor read, and their audience is still small, while novels centered on plot are far more popular on the market, Doyle's representative work, The Adventures of Sherlock Holmes, is the best example, and this series is difficult to even call detective novels. It is more in line with the scope of detective and adventure novels, but its global influence is unmatched. Think about it too, it has a strong storyline and various twists in the ending, moreover, the male lead is both handsome and intelligent, readers who immerse themselves in it will surely enjoy reading it with relish. Lu Shijing recalled the original text of No One Survives and found that the content of the novel seemed to be engraved in his mind, with particularly clear memories. He also didn't know if this was a sequela left by time travel, he picked up his pen and wrote the beginning of the story. Ten little Indian boys went out to dine, ten little Indian boys, running around for food, one choked his little self and then there were nine one choked to death and couldn't be saved, only nine out of ten remained. Nine little Indian boys sat up very late, nine Indian little boys, sleepless late at night, really tired, one overslept himself and then there were heights I fell asleep and fell asleep, leaving only eight out of nine. Natsum Soseki watched from behind, with a layer of goosebumps on her arm. This beginning this beginning is really he thought countless words in his heart to describe it, but found that he couldn't find the appropriate one. He just felt that Lu Shi was writing something very new, so new that he didn't deserve to give an evaluation. In an instant, under the reflection of the gas lamp, Lu Shi's figure seemed to have grown much taller. Natsum Soseki tiptoed away from the table and took out a book to read, as a result, he was restless and couldn't even get into school, occasionally looking up at Lu Shi's direction. Lu Shi seemed to have entered a state of selflessness, writing as if he had a clear mind. The content of the preface and the first chapter was almost completed in one go. It was only three hours after finishing the last sentence of the first chapter, just after lunchtime. He stretched lazily, Shamu, take a look. Natsum Soseki was already waiting, quickly approaching and studying carefully. Strangely enough, after that stunning opening, the first chapter appears somewhat plain, not low in level, but just not low. He said, very good, but not good enough. After giving this evaluation, I felt like I was holding myself up, so I quickly bowed repeatedly, sensational mud private horse racing. Lu Shi was covered in black lines I have witnessed the traditional artistic skills engraved in the bones of Japanese people. He waved his hand, what's there to apologize for? You're not wrong. The beginning is really plain, after all, it hasn't started yet. It's okay, I'll write two more chapters today. When someone dies, it will naturally be fascinating. The new book is on its way, and we hope everyone can support it. End of this chapter. Chapter 6 Masters You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 6 Masters the next day, in the morning. Smith, the teacher of Natsum Soseki, knocked on the door of Brea Road, not Doyle. The old man did not enter the house, he stood outside the door and said with some embarrassment, Mr. Lou, Arthur has an urgent matter and rushed back to his hometown of Edinburgh overnight, so let me introduce you to Charles. Seemingly worried about a misunderstanding by Lou Shur, he quickly added, don't think too much. Arthur just reignited his passion for writing because of yesterday's conversation with you too. Perhaps soon we will see the resurrection of Sherlock Holmes. The last case was published in December 1893, The Hound of Baskerville was published in August 1901, during this period, Holmes was in a state of death, from a time perspective, what Smith said may not be all comforting words, it should be a mixed bag of truth and falsehood. Lu Shi invited, Sir, would you like to come in and sit down? Smith lowered his head quite gentlemanly in gratitude and said, No, 
let's hurry to Fleet Street and not let Charles wait too long. He's a hot-tempered person. The old man reached out to tidy up the round top hat, as if silently urging. Lu Shu nodded in understanding. From the name, it is not difficult to see that the Manchester Guardian is headquartered in Manchester City and has an office in London. Charles Presswich Scott, as the editor-in-chief, cannot stay here for long. Smith boarded the carriage and headed towards Fleet Street together with Lu Shu. Fleet Street is named after the nearby Fleet River and served as the headquarters of traditional British media until the 1980s, hence it is known as the hometown of British newspapers. The most prominent building here is the headquarters of the Times, tall and elegant, in contrast, the office of the Manchester Guardian is much shabby. It only rents a three-story Ottoman-style apartment. The door is empty, and there is a smell of ammonia beside the stairs, like being pissed by a drunk. Smith knocked on the door and handed the business card to the gatekeeper. The gatekeeper confirmed his identity and beckoned him and Lu Shu to enter the house, the editor-in-chief is already waiting for you. He led the two of them up the stairs and headed straight to the third floor, crossing the piles of manuscripts and newspapers piled up on the ground, to the innermost room. Just as I was about to knock on the door, there was a conversation coming from inside, editor-in-chief, won't you go eat? Waiting for someone. Oh, by the way, I heard it's a young writer recommended by Dr. Doyle, it seems like he's still Chinese. That stinky bastard Doyle, you really think we're picking up junk. Why do you recommend all kinds of crooked melons and cracked dates to me? Chinese people are all writing novels. Can he write? Can't write. You don't have this ability, do you know? The gatekeeper's hand, ready to knock on the door, froze. The atmosphere is awkward. Smith patted Lu Shu's shoulder and then cleared his throat loudly. To ensure that people inside could hear him, he even tapped the wooden floor a few times with his cane. The editor-in-chief's room suddenly quieted down. Not long after, the door opened and a young editor ran out holding piles of newspapers with his head down, the voice of editor-in-chief Scott echoed behind him, is that old William. Come in. When Smith led him to land, he went into the room and said, Charles, when did you start to look down on people? Why, the Londoners haven't made you a country bumpkin from Manchester so obedient. Scott's face turned black, so sometimes I really get annoyed with Oliver Twist. Dot. In Oliver Twist, Dickens described Manchester as a synonym for poverty and suffering, and this stereotype was widely spread. Londoners at the feet of the Queen naturally looked down on those country bumpkins from Manchester. Smith chuckled lightly, so don't always look at things with the same old eyes. Isn't Manchester different from the past? I like the glasses produced there. Scott clicked and didn't take over. Smith frowned as he remained noncommittal, this is not done by gentlemen. Scott sighed and replied, ah, uh, you don't know. China. Forget it, don't mention this. As an influential newspaper editor-in-chief, he has his own channels of information to gain a rough understanding of the current situation in China. Of course, Lu Shi also knew, in the near future, on October 17, 1900, the commander-in-chief of the Eight-Nation Alliance, Wadisi, entered Beijing and established a headquarters in the Forbidden City, as well as a military colonial organization called the Beijing Management Committee at the Imperial Palace. In the general perception, the Forbidden City was the power center of the Qin court, approximately equivalent to the seat of the British Parliament. The Palace of Westminster, this type of landmark is set up as the headquarters of foreign armies, basically symbolizing the end of a regime. When Scott looked at Lu, there was a hint of arrogant pity in his eyes. He reached out his hand, draft. The attitude is somewhat casual, obviously not expecting a Chinese person to write such good works. Lu Shi was actually a bit angry, but after thinking about it, he still had a ridiculous braid on the back of his head, and his anger turned into helplessness, alas, in 1900 for a moment, his heart was filled with mixed flavors, what can I do if I am in a foreign land? Seeing him in a daze, Scott snorted coldly and said, young man, 
are you waiting for me to apologize? I'll tell you, I don't owe you anything. If it weren't for that fool Doyle. Speaking, he glanced at Smith and swallowed the subsequent complaints, Smith is Doyle's friend, and it's not appropriate to scold Doyle in front of him. Lu Sher no longer felt angry and handed over the manuscript. Scott caught it with one hand and said, let's talk about it first. It's unlikely to happen. You know, our Manchester Guardian only has a page for book reviews, and there's no serial novels, so you'd better not hold it too big. Hmm. When he saw Lu Sher's manuscript, he suddenly showed a somewhat approving expression, a very beautiful handwriting font, somewhat similar to Italian font, but much more coherent than Italian font, very suitable for scenes with large handwriting volume. Is your teacher Italian? In fact, it is a font that comes with office software, which can be used more often. Lu sure didn't take over. Seeing that he didn't say anything, Scott didn't delve deeper and instead started reading the content. At first, he just wanted to take a rough look at everything and then casually find an excuse to dismiss Lu Sher. Unexpectedly, the preface at the beginning gave him a great impact. He said, Is this a detective novel? Lu Sher touched his nose and corrected, I'm not planning to assign a fixed detective character in this book, so it should be considered a suspense novel. Scott remained dumbfounded, the suspense novel uses a nursery rhyme as the preface. This beginning is also too novel. In an instant, his appetite was lifted. He took out his glasses from the small wooden box beside him and put them on, carefully reading them word by word, when he read the nursery rhyme appearing in the main text, and someone's way of death coincided with the first sentence of the nursery rhyme, he couldn't help but tremble violently. A layer of goosebumps appeared on the skin at the back of his neck, and his cold hair stood up. He looked up and asked in confusion, which master's work is this? After speaking, I felt something was wrong again, isn't the master the Chinese young man in front of me? When Scott looked at Lu, his gaze became fanatical and restless. New book on the road, seeking support. End of this chapter. Chapter 7 Isn't this a coincidence? You are listening at novelfull.audio. Chapter 7 Isn't This a Coincidence? Smith looked at Lu Sher and then at Scott, feeling a bit confused, what is the situation? He pointed to the manuscript and asked in a low voice, Mr. Lu, can I read it? Of course, this is an unpublished work. If you think it's not suitable, then forget it. Lu Sher said, of course, please. Smith picked up the manuscript and read it carefully, for a long time, uh, he let out a mouthful of dullness and then said with some approval, no wonder Mr. Lu can see the artistic quality of the title, A Study in Scarlet. It turned out that it was because he was so familiar with English writing and wrote it very authentically. Lu Shi waved his hands repeatedly, you flattered me. Judging from his humility, Smith's smile was even more pronounced, you should be aware that this is not an exaggeration. In Lu Shi's manuscript, the preface is a nursery rhyme adapted from the collection of Goose Mother's nursery rhymes, due to the dark era background of this children's rhyme collection book in the late 18th century, the content is often filled with bloody, cruel, and realistic sentences. Conservative people do not have a high acceptance of this aspect, so every time it is reprinted, it will be edited, the song referenced in the preface is in the deleted row and column. Lu Sher was able to excavate it and make good use of its eerie atmosphere, far surpassing the vast majority of authors Smith had met. If it weren't for Xia Mu's introduction, Smith would even have thought that Lu Sher had lived in London for decades. This young man is a genius. Smith said, and your writing style is very innovative. Is this nursery rhyme? A prophecy. What I mean is, the death of the main characters is the same as in the nursery rhyme. After speaking, he himself denied it and said, no, it should be the culprit imitating nursery rhymes to commit the crime. How can there be any prophecy in this world? Scott interjected, another well-designed point is that the story takes place on a closed and isolated deserted island. After the incident, the police are unable to intervene for a short period of time, 
and the conditions in the closed environment are relatively limited. Solving the case can only rely on pure reasoning. And there's also. That's right, I think. Take a look here. As the two of you speak, I actively discuss the content of the first three chapters. This is where Chapeau Nyo X stands. While others can be considered impressive if a book has one innovative point, No One Survives, is the pioneering work of two modes. Blizzard Villa, Killing with Nursery Rhymes. There are too many future generations who have copied this island chain killing mode, readers may find it ordinary to read too much, but the fact is, they all copied Chapeau. Lu Shi coughed lightly and interrupted their discussion, he pulled the manuscript back from the desk, with regret written on his face, and said. Mr. Scott, since the Manchester Guardian has no space for serial novels, I can only submit it elsewhere. Papa, Scott held down his hand, wait a minute. His face was unpredictable. Smith said, Charles, don't be childish. You should be well aware of the value of this novel. Scott nodded slowly and began to calculate in his heart. As the editor-in-chief of a high-selling newspaper, his energy should not be underestimated. Helping Lou Scher serialize in some weekly and magazine publications is just a piece of cake, it's just that asking for help comes at a cost of personal favors, can this young man from China shoulder his trust? He asked, is there an outline? Lu Shi shook his head and said, there is no outline. But I can make a table and list the relevant introductions of these main characters one by one. Of course, doing so will undoubtedly cause a certain degree of spoilers, so you need to be mentally prepared. As soon as the words finished, Smith walked to the window, let me take a look at the street view. Scott said helplessly, fuck, spoiler. It's the first time I've ever hated my profession so much. He took out a pen and paper and handed it to Lu Shi, please. Lu Shi buried his head in a hasty book, without adding any extra words, and the sound of pen tips rubbing against paper came from the room. Scott on the side read out in a low voice. Lawrence John Vograve, judge, committed the crime of sentencing Edward Seaton to death, Vila Elizabeth Clare's son, a teacher, committed the crime of murdering Cyril Ogilvy Hamilton, Philip Lombard, a soldier, committed the crime of harming 20.1 adults from an East African tribe, Smith was furious and said, don't read it out. However, Scott ignored and frowned as if lost in thought, after a while, he suddenly interrupted Lou Sher and said, can you transfer the crimes committed by Philip Lombard from East Africa to Bohr? If you are willing, I can guarantee that your book will sell for a good price and be published in large quantities. Lu Shi looked deeply at the other person, with a curved corner of his mouth, Boolean. Inexplicably, Scott immediately felt a sense of being seen through, feeling uncomfortable all over. He asked, can't we? Lu Shi replied, no, I think it's quite good. After all, the British Empire has been fighting against the Boers in South Africa for a while now. The newspaper reports extensively every day, and readers are already familiar with Boers, which is indeed more realistic than East Africa. He patted his forehead as if he remembered something, by the way, the front page headline of yesterday's Manchester Guardian seemed to be about the British-Bulgarian War. Mr. Churchill bombarded the government's policy in the British-Bulgarian War and resolutely opposed the expansion plan. Well, it was a wonderful news release. Upon hearing this, Scott knew that his caution had been exposed. Since that's the case, there's no need to disguise anything anymore, he lightly tapped the table with his fingers, whether supporting or opposing war, the citizens of the British Empire have the right to know the truth, don't you think? At least, they can't praise war like the Daily Telegraph. Art processing without praising virtues. Lu Shi whispered, hee hee, Mr. Scott, you should really go into politics. Scott was stunned for a moment, then burst into laughter, no, that's too boring. I prefer running a newspaper. I use the Manchester Guardian to form an umbrella to block the sky and cover the sky in London. He began serving as an editor for the Guardian in 1872 and lasted for a full 57 years. 
It was during his tenure that The Guardian developed from a local newspaper to a national newspaper, and also became a world.Renowned newspaper. Moreover, Scott is a staunch liberal party, he once declared, comments are free, but facts are sacred. The voices of opponents have the same right to be heard as those of friends. But now it seems that this tendency may be a disguise to conceal ambition. Which one is higher in his value ranking, the vision of becoming a newspaper tycoon and the ideal of adhering to freedom of comment? It's hard to say. Lu Shi spoke confidently and said, all you talk about is ideology, but all you think about is business. Scott didn't think it was wrong, talking to smart people is a pleasure. Lu Shi nodded and said, then I have made all the changes that can be made. For example, the nursery rhyme in the preface, I am planning to change it into the original text. At this moment, Smith on the side also interjected, yes, I just thought it was strange. The original nursery rhyme was clearly, Ten Little Niggers, but how did it turn into, Ten Little Indian Boys, dot? Of course, it's because of the foolish political correctness of modern Europe and America Lou Shirt did not answer directly, but looked at Scott, how's it going? The question, how is it, naturally asks about the manuscript fee. Scott could understand the implied meaning behind Lou Shirt's switch to, Ten Little Niggers, and was also prepared to hint at the Anglo-British War, he smiled knowingly, Mr. Lou's cooperation, of course, I should also show sincerity. The quality of the first three chapters is very high, and I can offer a price of £50 per chapter. Of course, if the novel becomes popular, the price can be further increased. We must use high remuneration to bind Lou Shirt, otherwise, if this kid goes to play for those old bastards in the Times or the Daily Telegraph, he will lose a lot. Lou Shur also said. The Manchester Guardian has no serial page. Where will my novel be published? Scott didn't want to, but replied, the supplement to the Scotsman on Wednesday is only a few days away. Lou Shur blinked his eyes, the headquarters of the Scotsman is in Edinburgh, Doyle's hometown is also in Edinburgh, isn't this a coincidence? End of this chapter. Chapter 8. Lou. You are listening at NovelFull.audio. The source has no content or has errors. Chapter 9 Where did this TM come from? You are listening at NovelFull.audio. Chapter 9 Where did this TM come from? Fleet Street, Office of the Scotsman Editor-in-Chief Charles Alfred Cooper couldn't believe his ears as he listened to the report from his staff, are you saying that sales have increased by 3,700 copies? Scott chuckled and corrected, it's 3,751, you heard it right. Also, I have to remind you that this number is because you only published 8,000 newspapers in London, and the upper limit of the increment is there. 3,751 has already reached its peak. Cooper still had an incredulous expression on his face. For a long time, he waved his hand and gestured for the clerk to go out. Then, he collapsed into his chair and rubbed his eyebrows with his fingers, digesting the shock this incident had brought to his heart. No one survives, is on fire. For a day, the price of the Wednesday supplement of the Scotsman soared in the second dot hand market. There are many smart people in Britain who know the value of collecting this thing, just like the 1887 bitten Christmas yearbook, which published Sherlock Holmes's debut work, The Scarlet Works, and had already been sold for £300, everyone wants to lie down and make money. Interestingly, Doyle's writing fee was only £25 at the time. With the explosive popularity of No One Survives, the mysterious name Lou has also spread throughout the streets and alleys, people are curious about what kind of person he is. Cooper sighed and said, I didn't expect it to be a Chinese. As the editor-in-chief, he is an ambitious person, at that time, when he took over the Scotsman, the Scotsman was just a local newspaper in a corner. It was his determination to rent a telegraph line between London and Edinburgh. Later, it became the first newspaper outside the major traditional newspapers in London to set up an office in Fleet Street, earlier than the Manchester Guardian. Unfortunately, Edinburgh lags far behind in industrialization, and printing costs have not been able to be reduced. 
In addition, the distance from London is too far, and transportation costs are also high, their newspaper sells for one penny, while their newspaper sells for four pence, how could this possibly pass? What's more, the Scotsman has a sharp point of view and is more avant-guard than the Manchester Guardian, which has a small audience, in this situation, it is foreseeable that sales will continue to decline. Even Cooper couldn't have imagined that he could rely on a novel to directly counterattack, at this moment, he is still confused, as if in a dream. Scott stretched lazily, later, those two overseas students will come over. Do you know what to do? Cooper said calmly, of course. I have already thought about it. Even if we don't consider the factor of a thousand dollars buying horse bones, objectively evaluating the level of, no one survives, is too low. The fee of fifty pounds per chapter is too low, doubling it is more reasonable. Doubling fifty pounds is one hundred pounds, this is undoubtedly a huge sum of money. In 1900, a London citizen earning one hundred pounds a year was enough to live a fairly prosperous life, and a chapter in Lucia can earn one hundred pounds. Scott picked up a briefcase from his feet, by the way, I'll make a favor for you, it's a good thing. As he spoke, he patted the box and continued to introduce, the Underwood 5 commemorative model has a variety of functions, smooth typing, and low failure rate. It's not like Oliver and Remington, it's made in the United States. Cooper knew there was a typewriter in the box when he heard the words, Underwood, Oliver, and, Remington, he exclaimed, TSK TSK, when did our British Empire also begin to worship American products? Don't forget, the typewriter is our invention. Scott laughed heartily, no, it's a factual error. The typewriter was invented by Italians. Also, if you're Scottish, don't say, our British Empire. Cooper almost kicked the other person's but, fuck, I can go to your place. The two of them laughed and started arguing. Not long after, there was a knocking on the door outside, the clerk's voice rang out, editor-in-chief, Mr. Liu and Mr. Xia Mu have arrived. The two people inside the room immediately sat upright, Cooper said, please invite them in. Quickly, Lu Shur and Natsum Soseki pushed the door in. Cooper stood up and took the initiative to shake hands with the two of them, especially when Lu Shur pulled the landing hand, he was not ready to let go, and at the same time, he didn't forget to compliment, Mr. Lu, these days when I read, No One Survives, I can't help but feel that there is such a magical way of constructing stories in the world, it's so amazing. Everyone carries the flower sedan chair, Lu Shur waved his hand, novels are just leisure reading, Mr. Cooper praised them. They exchanged affectionately, friendly, and deeply for a while before finally releasing their clasped hands and taking their respective seats. Cooper hesitated for a moment and asked, Mr. Lu, your work is very popular. Have you ever considered reissuing it? Of course, the royalties for reissues will not be low. Also, we are willing to offer £100 per chapter for the following chapters. What do you think? Is it the first time it's been published and needs to be reissued? Lu Shur looked at Cooper and knew that the hesitation on his face was just a performance, £100 per chapter is not a small amount. Cooper must have already thought of it, and if he is willing to offer this price range, he must be preparing to use, no one survives, as a gimmick to boost sales and establish a foothold in the Red Sea of print media in London. Lu Shur did not immediately respond. Cooper knew very well that he couldn't bear to let go of his child and couldn't keep a wolf in place, he pushed the toolbox over, Mr. Lu, I see that the manuscript you handed to the newspaper before was written in tens of thousands of words. I'm afraid your fingers, arms, and neck may not be able to handle it, right. Would you like to try this? Lu Shi curiously said, what is this? Cooper opened the box and took out the typewriter inside, introducing, the Underwood 5 commemorative model has a variety of functions, smooth typing, and low failure rate. It's not like Oliver and Remington, it's made in the United States. Scott's face turned black on the side, thinking to himself, wasn't this what he had just said? He spat and secretly looked down upon Cooper. Cooper ignored his old friend's contempt and continued, 
I wonder if Mr. Lu would use. Before he could finish speaking, Lu Shi took over the conversation and said, Of course I do. Typewriters can indeed improve work efficiency, but I don't know if this one is useless. Having the privilege of seeing this cross-generational product, his voice was filled with excitement, keep in mind that the Underwood 5 quickly became the best dot-selling typewriter after its release, with a market share of over half, making it an absolute legendary product. Lu Shi attempted to press, I'll give it a try. Cooper reminded, Mr. Lu, would you like to take a look at the instructions for? Um. That. Lu Shi shook his head with a smile, as a modern person, there are many opportunities to interact with QWERTY keyboards, and he also works as a translator, dealing with text every day and typing at an incredible speed. He put the paper card in place and casually tapped on the keyboard of the typewriter, saying, Dinner is almost over. The wine and food are delicious, and Rogers is very attentive. The people sitting here are all in high spirits. Conversations between each other have become more relaxed and friendly. This is the beginning of the third chapter of No One Survives. Two British people were confused, Cooper swallowed his saliva and said, Mr. Lu, don't you need to look at the keyboard? Lu sure said, for a writer, blind typing is the most basic operation. While answering, the fingers typing on the keyboard didn't stop, even getting faster and faster, like a fast dance, accompanied by a crackling sound, typing a whole long paragraph of the article. Cooper and Scott couldn't help but stare at each other, the first time they met a suspense novel writer who started writing the main text without outlining it, because suspense novels require meticulous logic and do not have an overall control over writing directly, it is easy to contradict each other and make the donkey's lips incorrect, it can be seen that when Lu Shi writes, he feels like he has divine assistance, and it doesn't look like he will eat books later on. Moreover, Lu Xiu's typing speed was too fast, to the point where neither editor-in-chief could understand it. Just as they were stunned, Matsum Soseki's voice suddenly came. Lu. Wait. Lu. Is that machine. Smoking. Lu Xiu only then noticed that one of the dials inside the typewriter was red and looked very hot, he leaned up to observe, well, it's the paddle for the letter E. There's no way, E is the most commonly used in English writing, and no wonder the paddle gets too hot. It seems like we can only wait a little longer. Sigh, Underwood number 5 isn't as divine as we thought. Upon hearing these words, Cooper and Scott were in a chaotic state in the wind, where did this TM come from? End of this chapter. Chapter 10 Jackal, Wolf, Tiger, Leopard, Eagle, Lion Snake, and Scorpion. You are listening at NovelFull.audio. Chapter 10 Jackal, Wolf, Tiger, Leopard, Eagle, Lion, Snake, and Scorpion Lu Shi stretched lazily, anyway, the efficiency of a typewriter is definitely much better than handwriting, and it's also good for the lumbar and cervical vertebrae. The two Englishmen's eyes changed as they looked at him, the atmosphere is strange. After a while, Scott finally spoke up, so. Let's get back to the main topic. Lu Shi nodded, of course. Scott pondered for a moment and said, Mr. Lu, you should know the layout of our Manchester Guardian. In addition to the news editorials, there are also literary reviews and book list recommendations. Next Thursday, we are going to focus on Nobody Lives. The Scotsman supplement was published on Wednesday, and the Manchester Guardian reviewed the book the next day, obviously, this is a strong alliance between two left.wing newspapers, a great combination of punches. Lu Shi didn't immediately agree. He lowered his head and pondered for a moment before asking, what do I need to cooperate with? A child can be taught. The two Englishmen couldn't help but glance at each other, their eyes flickering with joy. Scott said, Mr. Lu, you are the author of No One Survives, so we may need to give you an interview for the entire page. The photographer will take photos for you, so we will prepare a more formal set of clothes, and also. He showed an awkward and embarrassed expression, and his gaze lingered slightly on Lu Shi's braids. It goes without saying. Where could Lu Shi not understand? 
he asked, cut your braids. Scott touched his nose, sorry. Lu Sure waved his hand and answered, it's okay, isn't it just cutting off the braid? It's not a difficult task. Mr. Scott can rest assured. The foreign students studying in the Qing dynasty were not fluent in language and wore braids and coats, which was in stark contrast to foreigners wearing suits. Walking on the streets was a beautiful scenery that always attracted foreigners to stop, and the classmates who attend classes with them already look down on them, coupled with wearing these strange clothes, they will double their exclusion, in order to integrate, there are many who cut their braids. Scott seemed to breathe a sigh of relief, forcing others to change customs is not the act of a gentleman, but for the sake of taking photos. Sigh. Next came a series of apologies, one after another, like Natsum Soseki possessed. Lu Shur said nonchalantly, All right, all right, Mr. Scott. If there's nothing else, then we'll leave. He nodded to Natsum Soseki beside him, the latter understood and left the seat. Cooper and Scott personally escorted them to the main entrance of the office, placed the manuscript fee in an envelope, and solemnly handed it to Lu Shur. Only then did they bid farewell and stand on the stairs, gazing out from afar. Their figures remained motionless for a long time, until the two overseas students boarded the carriage, that appearance is like two watchman stones. Natsum Soseki couldn't help but feel a chill and took a cold breath. Hiss. Lu Shur laughed heartily, what's wrong? Natsum Soseki looked puzzled and said, I don't know either, I just feel like they. They. He seemed to be unable to find suitable vocabulary for a while. Lu Shur finished speaking for him and said, Is it too much? Natsum Soseki nodded solemnly. Undoubtedly, for the Scotsman, land cruiser is the key to boosting sales, and it is normal for Cooper to be more attentive, but what's going on with Scott? According to the trend, the Manchester Guardian, as a rising star, has been able to threaten the status of the Times and the Daily Telegraph. Why does the chief editor of such a national newspaper value new writers so much? I can't figure it out after much thought Lu Sure, without any doubts, said, it's normal. Scott wants to use my identity. Natsum Soseki was shocked, what kind of identity? A writer. International students. Chinese people. He became increasingly puzzled. Lu Shur continued to explain, why do you think Scott asked me to cut my braids? Natsum Soseki said, integrate into London society, Lu Shur nodded, that's right. When it sounds good, it's called integration, but when it sounds bad, it's called appearing like a normal person. As a Chinese, this country is suffering from the ravages of the eight-nation alliance, like a normal person. Dot. Suddenly, Natsum Soseki widened her eyes, he reacted. There are several tumultuous events in British politics today. Women's suffrage protect tariff policies expand the army the Anglo-British war, on these battlefields, members of the Conservative Party and the Liberal Party fought fiercely, together with the Times, the Daily Telegraph and the Manchester Guardian. At this time, Lu Shi emerged from the sky, a Chinese person, an international student, a suspense novel writer, his appearance seemed to announce loudly, even in invaded countries, the people there are normal. Moreover, several modifications to No One Survives are all related to Bull, pointing directly at the barbaric behavior of the British during the Anglo-British War, this is a full stack of buffs. For the liberal-leaning Manchester Guardian, is there any better use of candidates than Lu Shi? Moreover, the Eight Nation Alliance is probably wreaking havoc in the capital at this time. Perhaps soon, good news will come. Lu Shi's gaze flickered. In fact, based on time, the Forbidden City should have already fallen, but at the level of communication in the early 20th century, due to channel pollution and weak radio waves, the cross sea telegraph lines were extremely unstable, resulting in many messages having to be transmitted manually. Even if the news was delayed by a week, it was considered normal, so there was not much movement in London yet. Natsum Soseki looked at Lu Shur, suddenly, he said with a hint of disgust and contempt, the British are really arrogant. Humph, they seem like normal people. 
normal people. Normal and abnormal, civilization and barbarism, how can the British be defined? What is the essential difference between the Liberal Party and the Conservative Party? Ironically, one of the purposes of the Manchester Guardian is that it is absolutely independent and independent, independent of political parties. Natsum Soseki murmured to himself, damn it. Lu Shi patted his shoulder and said, jackals, wolves, tigers, leopards, eagles, lions, snakes, and scorpions. Even if you put on a layer of human skin, you can't hide your greed. I still say, all you talk about is ideology, all you think about is business. They only think about fame and fortune. Dot. 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 For a moment, the two remained silent. After a while, Natsum Soseki spoke again and said, Stir up the mud Private Marseille. He knelt down in the narrow space of the carriage. The third time in recent days. Lu Xie couldn't help but feel a moment of helplessness and said, All right, it's none of your business. Natsum Soseki shook his head, No, I must apologize for my country. And you should know that without that 200 million tails of silver, the Ministry of Education wouldn't have the financial resources to expand Japan's overseas study abroad. Maybe I won't be able to come. 200 million tails of silver, this is the amount of compensation under the Treaty of Shimonoseki, because the Eight Nation Alliance was mentioned earlier and Japan also had a stake, Natsum Soseki apologized. Lu Shi pulled the other party up, it's no use apologizing, I can't accept your apology on behalf of China. Besides, you. He hesitated to speak. In fact, Natsum Soseki has been a super big black hole in the Meiji government all his life, the kind of person who always spouts, and, unlike others, he is truly anti-war, not anti-war defeat, this kind of person is truly beyond reproach. But those things happened after Natsum Soseki returned to China, and Lu Xi couldn't say. He changed the topic and said, as international students, we must unite. Natsum Soseki nodded wildly, the future literary giant looked like he was being deceived and crippled. This book has been signed and can be consumed with confidence. End of this chapter